just one second. Um, just one second, please. I, I'm having some kind of a connection issue. Yeah, so um, basic ground rules is that I will be keeping everybody on mute uh, while the doctor is talking. And once uh, he is ready to answer questions, request all of you to unmute yourself. Uh, and then ask this question and again go on mute. This uh, entire session, like the earlier session, they've all been recorded and kept on the Tare social website in case anybody wants to uh, uh, refer to any of the, uh, the past. Uh, finally, in case uh, any of you would like to contact Dr. Prem uh, professionally for consultation, his contact details are on my website. You can just click on that and you can contact him. Uh, Having said that, uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Uh, Prem Nasiman. Again, Doctor, thank you very much uh, for doing this every week for us. Uh, today's topic is something which I think is uh, a, a very, very, the only good thing I can think of that's come out from the COVID epidemic, which is the onset and the popularization of telemedicine, our ability to contact our medical practitioners, whether it's a, a GP, whether it's a a doctor from anywhere in the world sitting in the comforts of our own home. Uh, doctor, I will leave, uh, I will uh, hand this over to you. Uh, please note everybody, you are on mute. Yeah, a very, very good morning to all of you. Uh, it's nice to be back on uh, every Saturday wherein we are able to talk to all you older adults, try to share topics which are very important to your life. And I think one of the most important things or changes that has happened is uh, actually the technology part. A lot of older people have embraced technology, but still there is always a doubt or there is always, uh, you can say, if you say, I won't say a suspicion, a stoppage in the mind, maybe a do a teleconsultation, how advantageous it is. Uh, whether it's helpful or not as a same consultation when you actually go and meet your doctor. Now, let us let us just talk about the current scenario because that is a very good background. Uh, we all know that most health advisories which have been given say that people above 65 should not be leaving their homes. Uh, they should stay at home and trying to do everything at home rather than going to the hospital for even minor things. So I think that is one of the most important things. Try to stay at home still because we are really not, we are really not yet ready to go out because the number of cases are increasing. I mean, this is, this is not something to scare you. Let us talk. We always try to talk facts because I very well know that older adults are all understanding and they want to know the facts as well. So if we are looking at this and we look at some, maybe an improvement which happens in a few months, but we have health ailments, we have, uh, we have our diseases which we need to control and that has to be done continuously. So we need to be in touch with our doctors. Now telemedicine is not something which has just started during COVID. It has been happening abroad very, very frequently. Now the difference between India and abroad is to get an appointment of, for example, even a geriatrician abroad, you take months. In India, you can actually opt for somebody and uh, you can actually get it immediately also. And then you can see that particular person. So that's how telemedicine really came in in the West because not all problems need older people to come to the hospital. One. Two is secondly, not all older people can come to the hospital. So what has happened in this COVID era is with telemedicine, even I have been able to help people which I knew would I would never be able to call to the hospital purely because they are either bedridden or they cannot come. And I have been in touch with them always in video before. So we used to do some kind of teleconsultation before. Now earlier there was a legality as well because it was not legal completely as far as our medical council was concerned too. Why? Because I would like to talk about the loopholes. One is there is no physical examination. So that is something which is always something which deters from a doctor's perspective. But not all conditions need physical examination. For example, if you're somebody who has got diabetes for six months, you're doing well, your tests you have done, and we just need to continue same. 
so you can imagine rather than coming to the hospital of course the service that you get from the doctor is pretty much the same the advice will be he will not going to advise you in very any different way or any lesser way just because you are not seeing him in person he will advise you the normal way he does but what we are trying to do is trying to help you and trying to get that extra anxiety out of your mind a lot of old people just have that pure anxiety to come to the hospital and it might be for a condition which is very normal i mean even now for example if you have a serious condition like a chest pain and you feel you are getting a heart attack or a stroke you have to come to the hospital i mean irrespective of covid that's what we are saying any emergency you need to still come to the hospital but it's very important that we try to see how it helps you and how the flip side so i would want to analyze that and encourage you of course by the end of this to actually try to opt for more and more tele consultations as of now and don't worry about it because it's the way you are get keeping in touch with your doctor and it's a way that the doctor also knows how you are doing and at the same time you are absolutely able to know have the control of your disease now there are a lot of platforms also which have come out online platforms like i'm also a part of couple of them there is something known as clinic jet and there is something known as uh, clinic q so these two platforms are actually allowing me to build a database of yours so whatever tests you do i am going to be i mean in a soft copy i will have it so if you are at any point worried that what will happen to the past history how will the doctor be able to access my files so there are ways of doing that as well which i will come on to now let me talk about the basic advantages here in this era of course one is you don't have to travel to the hospital because sometimes traveling can be difficult for an older person who is living alone or some a lot of times i have say, seen that an older person is dependent on a younger person who might be normally busy not staying with them but when that particular person becomes free then only you can come to the appointment to the doctor rather than when you want to go so some dependency and for whatever reason because your health does not allow you not because you are afraid of going alone because your health might not be allowing you to do so then another thing it's obviously saves you in a big deal is time because a lot of time the waiting that you have to do in the hospital and it's again not the doctor's fault not your fault your appointment is there if a person has a bigger issue we doctors have to spend more time and especially when i see older people i spend a lot of time anyway so whoever is waiting for me anyways has to be waiting and everybody is old so i have to give everybody the same priority only thing is i have to see who has a bigger problem and try to prioritize them so that waiting will go because you will take a fixed appointment so for example if there is a slot that i give you 1 o'clock so i will be giving you that slot because i am available only for you in that slot whether it's a 15 minutes slot 20 minutes slot that's what we usually give or if it extends so where we try to finish that slot and then take the next patient so that's how it will be so if you come at 1 o'clock and you are in with whatever technical things which you need to know which i will come to too because the biggest deterrent sometimes for a video consultation is the technicality so oh my god i have to log into this and whether the internet will be okay so there are a lot of ifs and buts as well but once you log in you get into the doctor i mean and most older adults come before time so i don't need to really tell tell you anything about it they will come 10 minutes before time religiously and then they wait and then in the normal time they are always in and then when they wait for for any doctor in the hospital also they are well before time and they are very courteous to inform us because see in bombay the traffic situation was always bad and it always will be you have seen more than me so sometimes delays can happen in on either side because of that then one thing which is very very important i think is it helps in documentation also more when you are doing a video consultation everybody feels that when you go to the doctor the doctor writes and gives to you then only documentation is done no when you are doing a video consultation you will have more soft copies so you will be able to send across those soft copies maybe just maybe one day before to the doctor he is already ready with your investigations so or else what happens is a lot of times you have to take your investigations the doctor will see your investigations then those 5 10 minutes obviously take more so it becomes your your depending upon your problems the consultation will become crisper quicker again let me be very important the most important person is still you 
if you have more problems that doesn't mean just because i have seen your investigations before i'll be like no 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 your fight 10 minutes is over no that that doesn't work with older people and with doctors it doesn't work that way then another biggest advantage i feel which i have already talked about is it has helped you to embrace technology because technology is something which is now you need to embrace not only to see your doctors you need to embrace it to maybe see your near and dear ones to talk to your uh, uh, near and dear ones uh, to be in touch with your social network now what i would want to emphasize on it is do not always think that you can consult a doctor only through video it's your comfort video would be ideal because we will be able to see you we will be able to know if you have to show something in particular for example i can see that you don't have teeth rather than you telling me talking i can see what type of hearing aid you are using you can show it to me i can see the spectacles i can see that the the stick that you are using i can see your dentures whether you have a problem i can also see the strips of your uh medicines so that also so it in video is always most comfortable but certain older people are not comfortable with video uh, so an only audio consultation is also there then apart from that we have mediums like whatsapp we have mediums like normal phone call so all these all these things can be explored and all these options are there so basically you have clinical platforms as i mentioned you have zoom calls you have whatsapp calls whatsapp video calls or you have a basic phone call which which most people have done throughout our lives to doctors just trying to get into touch with them to actually uh, uh, get to know what your problems are and to actually clear the problems now what is in this particular time i would say it's most important that we as persons who are taking tele consultation focus on what we want to know from the doctor and it's a it easy way to make it age friendly which i obviously try to propagate is for me i will ask you four questions for sure one is what matters to you most because everybody's older person's goals are different for example if you have diabetes then what goals are there what care preferences you want it's and it's not only it's not only now it's later after the consultation ahead what do you want to do for that particular condition are you only, for example diabetes if everything is going well the plan would be to just follow up later second most important is medication now if medication is necessary obviously i like to give you a prescription which can be digital or obviously something which i'll scan and send you but it is very important because all your medications for me to know because they interfere with your health the more the medication the more the diseases maybe more the medications will be so i would have to actually sort of know those details third is i need to know your mentation my mentation i mean whether you are conscious enough or not that's why i said video helps more i will also be able to ask you certain questions which will allow me to judge your memory so that i know whether you have any memory issues which are now or not and the fourth and much very very important thing which i sort of try to believe in is the mobility now mobility is something i can see on video when you will show me or i can immediately see that no this is a bedridden patient who is not able to mobilize at all so these four things are very very important which on either side we would want to cover so i am just giving you a peep into these four things are something which we should always cover when we actually have a consultation with you because they will help us to make it more age friendly and and that's that's very important for example if you have to take an example i maybe now a lot of people might prioritize in asking how to prevent covid 19 so i would want to ask questions like how you are getting food do you have family help with your family are there any resources do you go to a club Uh, is there a, an organization is there a committee in your society who is helping you out with groceries so these are also why these are important because see if you don't get all these things it affects your nutrition if your nutrition gets affected it affects your health so that's important then medication i would want to know how you are taking those medications whether you understand which medication are you happy with the medications do you see the desired effect that we had discussed about are you taking the correct dose because that is which very important 
then mentation yeah i would ask you very simple questions like what day of the week can you list the months of the year because i just want to know in general that what your memory looks like then of course there is mobility so mobility is something which you can show me by getting up out of your chair walking a few steps and of course if you are on bed then i will immediately know that yeah so these things these four things form a very important framework of actually trying to do a tele consultation with an older adult but how do how how is it that we have an effective tele consultation so these are some prerequisites i would want to tell you one is always try to keep your papers ready if you have not already send it across the past diseases and most i am saying most older people who visit us in person also have a nice life history written this was the time when they were admitted this was the time they had this this was the medication they were taking earlier so all that is written then one thing with your medication an entire list and of course ideally have the strips with you so that you can show because i i always want to see the strips because there are a lot of similar sounding medications and uh, there have been mistakes made by older adults as well in in taking the dose because of pure confusion so that is something which we would want to avoid then as i told you earlier always have maybe a short history about which doctors you have seen so that after the consult i can at least get in touch with them and know if i need to know something more then any particular family history of particular diseases which you have which your family has had again it gives me an idea to prepare you for the future because ultimately what we want to do in a tele consultation is create a problem list and try to address each problems in whatever way i i will have to for example if you are isolated and you need help with that i would want to provide you companionship so the social part is also important and the medical part is also important now how to actually make a tele consultation beneficial for you it's it's very important now it it helps in sometimes also reducing the stress which is put for at home caregivers why because sometimes the caregivers have to come with you uh, it's easier to contact with them on the phone now there are certain diseases which actually telehealth really helps one is of course primary care of any frail old individual whether it is for joint pain muscle stiff uh, muscle stiffness for other management for physiotherapy then of course chronic diseases like diabetes hypertension heart disease wherein you might not always need to come and see the doctor in person palliative care palliative care or end of life care as we say later in which the the person will not always be able to come to the hospital so that's where we are able to sort of actually help you out online in trying to provide maybe the medications or trying to provide uh trying to provide you with the particular advice which will help you in palliative now what are the doubts which might be there from the older person side one is of course whenever they get into technology they are always worried about data breach whether this video has been recorded and it will be shown to other see videos of consultations are always recorded purely because it's legal so it has to be recorded but it is never shared so that is not something that is something you need to be very very sure about it is never shared with everybody and anybody because the doctor patient relationship is still the same that uh, the consent which is given by you for us to look into your problems that still remains in the record and these records are all full proof the video records the audio records and the records which are there in management that is in the platform what i am saying are full proof and the access is only to the doctors because these are all password driven if any other doctor also has to access those files then they are given that password because you might need more than one doctor and multidisciplinary team is very much common in geriatrics where it, for example you need a dentist for your teeth and i have referred to a dentist so i would obviously need the dentist to see maybe oh you are having a uh, history of taking aspirin whether you need to stop it not stop it so things like that then another thing that the elders are always uh, maybe a bit on back step as far as as far as uh, the doctor's thing is concerned is the pure is the pure joy of seeing a 
person in person now a lot of older people actually look forward to the appointment purely because they want to look they want to talk to the doctor and yeah i have experienced it a lot of times and because the amount of time we give to older adults which is very important the more time you give the more you know there might be a bit of joking there might be a bit of telling about the family and the medical illnesses social illnesses everything is taken care of so that part the personal part sometimes get that's cut off but it's still very much there in video so you should you should not feel that we are not in the same room this is a virtual virtual room wherein we will be together and we are still going to be addressing your problems so that is something which is something you should not worry about then another advantage we have is if you are if your relative is some in distant place that particular person can be on the call with you at the same time a lot of times what happens is after we consult and you need to tell them then they call us or you or you tell them and then they call you so it it it's a lot of explanation the same things have to be said twice or thrice but in this case you can have the relative connect from somewhere else maybe even abroad even anywhere in the world and try to be on the same call and uh, see what we want to clear is doubts because ultimately most relatives have doubts so that also becomes easier so as far as tele consultation is concerned tele medicine is concerned it is something which is very very helpful for older people and maybe the biggest deterrent for you all might be the technology part and trust me learning has no age so i don't think you will have a problem in learning you might be a bit slower but it's not it's not a hurry anyways it's a marathon we are looking at because this why i'm telling you to embrace it and be ready for it is because we might be seeing the same thing for some months and uh, the reason being we and as all i mean let me be frank older adults adjust with everything why because you have adjusted with life that's why you are living long it's not that every life has been a piece of uh, very easy everything has come in your platter so nothing nothing happens that way that's not life so you have overcome every obstacle and this is not an obstacle this is a learning opportunity so when you actually learn to be on video you might actually discover that this is what you even like so you can continue talking to people even apart from the doctor's consultation so that don't will be worry about the technology part you can always be trained there is no age to be really sort of uh, uh, not learning of course in people who are having for example vision problems there is always there is always the phone call which can be done people are having vision and hearing problems they might need somebody else that also can be done so it's not that it cannot be done so so the so the obstacles can be ironed out only thing that is there which we would want which we would be asking you is certain questions about your physical examination which you might have to measure yourself for example your blood pressure so those and your pulse oximeter if needed so these gadgets you might have to have at home purely because it helps us in knowing that whether uh, you can actually i mean what your blood pressure is now and what your this is uh, what your saturation is now or what your pulse rate is now because everything can be documented through machine then another important thing is investigation now most older adults will like in this how will you get investigated if you are if you are just going to do a general health check up which you do every yearly it can be delayed for another 2 months it's not very important now but if there are specific investigations like diabetes something you can do yourself at home or if there is something then laboratories are open now and don't worry they take full precautions because we are we are knowing how they every person is treated the same they come in their full protective equipment and they take full precautions and they'll take blood so that is not something you need to worry about so that is something that can also be handled so overall i just wanted to introduce you to the telemedicine concept and i as of now am doing telemedicine as well as i said in two apps which is known as clinic jet and clinic clinic you and of course my number is there so i am doing direct video consultations as well and don't worry about the prescriptions uh, the prescriptions are something which i send immediately and every doctor does because it's a legal document so you will get it anyways through scanning through mail digital prescriptions and if you are worried about another question which most older people are worried about is the payment part 
now as far as the payment part is concerned if you are not very very uh, you can say adept with digital payments and trust me most older people are a lot of older people are actually giving me on google pay and paytm themselves so they have also learned so again it can be learned if it cannot be learned then usual things like bank transfer and everything also is there and people can facilitate it there are people who will help you out for that so don't don't worry about those things as well and see ultimately we are here for you we are trying to help you in every possible way because we look at the holistic part as far as geriatrics is concerned so even teaching things to you if that's also a part of our role so in graceful living like for example we are teaching technology also like all you people are already on zoom calls so most people know how to get on zoom a lot of people don't know still they are trying to embrace it basic things like unmuting yourself putting the video on getting on to registration how to how to how to host the zoom meeting so these things we are doing why because we feel that ultimately this technology part is going to go on for some time and everybody including the older adults needs to embrace it and let me be frank we are also learning the nuances i mean the pandemic was not something which was pre planned or uh, which was something which was uh, everybody knew about so everybody has adjusted to it and i would say that's how we should go ahead so try to embrace it at the same time if you have problems in it you can always iron it out because ultimately there is a solution for everything as far as even technology is concerned and if you don't if you are worried about your internet connection there is always a phone call if you are worried about the video there is always a normal call so there are different ways of approaching telemedicine it's not always necessary that you need to be on video but video would be ideal purely because we get an opportunity to see you you get an opportunity to see us and ultimately you understand that who you are talking to because i think that is something which is very important in the lack of touch because we are not able to do a lot of a uh, lot of personal touch and lot of personal examination so thanks a lot for your patient hearing if you have any questions we can sort of get into that and uh, miss uh, with mr sele i would just want to maybe do a maybe a short short demo on how how you can actually do a teleconsultation uh thank you very much doctor i, I think you know what we will do is let's uh, yeah. uh, do you want to first do the demo and then ask for questions or do you want to do it other way around i mean if you if people have questions immediately then i think i'll take it and then i can go into the demo okay uh, so if anybody has any questions for dr prem if you could just unmute yourself uh, i have muted everybody ask the question then again mute yourself please hello can i ask question yes sure, ma'am yeah uh, i am uh, on metformin 500 uh, for diabetic should i continue with i'm taking it since last 3 4 years should i continue same or there is a change in it there should be a change in it ma'am if you uh, the thing is you're asking me a very specific question and without knowing much of your much of your past history and details i cannot tell you whether you should continue it or not what i would say is if you are not done any testing very recently and you are doing well on it then you can continue it but if you are not seen your sugars it would be ideal to have a look at your sugars and then we try to address what we need to continue no i am checking my sugar i have for so i some month taking my sugar, fasting in both okay so now depending and on it comes in the range of like thing is up to 118 or 20 and pp comes up to 140 uh, uh excuse me ma'am i i we are not using this forum for specific queries i would be wrong okay. i would be actually putting the doctor uh, uh, in a awkward position of giving a prognosis which may not be perfect for you uh, i mean without without actually actually being uh, seen you properly ma'am it's always difficult for me to just tell you i understand i'm sorry i understand that no, no, but please don't is be it, sorry. Okay. does it have any uh, side effect metformin metformin has certain side effects like stomach upset but then it doesn't happen to all Okay, uh, thank you. Any other questions from anybody? Um, any concerns? I think a lot of people had concerns about telemedicine. Um, if anybody has any concerns, uh, whether it's legal, whether it's uh, effective, uh, how many people are doing it? Uh, please ask the doctor. I mean, if if no. 
Nobody is asking. Doctor? Yeah, Doctor, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, no? Hello? Yeah. How safe is it to go for an ECG to a hospital? Ma'am, ma again, it's it's a quite an open question because it depends on which area you are. And uh, so in general, like what are the precautions hospitals are taking for an ECG? Ma'am, everywhere the normal precautions are being taken because purely we are in such we are in such a paradigm where basic basic safety precautions are being taken, like even for every patient. So that's not a worry. But again, is it because you want to do an ECG because it's your routine testing, or you are feeling some symptoms? Because if it's for routine, then you can delay it a bit because it's, it's now is not the time to do general health checkup because it's not really needed immediately if it's not an emergency. Of course, if you have doubts about your medicines and if you have doubts about what, what you need to do, then you need to be in touch with your doctor that they can help you out whether you need to do it or not. But I would say unless it is an emergency or it is really needed, you don't need to go to the hospital as a well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's routine. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the doctor? Uh, actually, as you were addressing it, I would just want to tell, I, as I mentioned, tele, tele consultations are absolutely legal uh, because uh, the MCI, in, earlier there was a rule. Of course, now the MCIs have changed the rules completely because that is the only consultation which is sort of available. I mean, people are visiting hospital as well, but then it is more uh, whether it's an emergency or whether they really need to see the doctor. For example, patients like cancer patients who are on chemotherapy, they really don't have a choice. So they have to come to the hospital and they have to take the chemotherapy or whatever radiotherapy that they have to take. So as far as normal things are concerned, telemedicine, teleconsultations are absolutely legal. I, I told you a couple of platforms, even just look online is doing it. Then uh, even clinic jet, clinic advantage, then there are others as well. I mean, other hospitals in your area also must be doing it because it's very legal. So it's not that something which is illegal. And you will always, you will always get a prescription and the consultation record after it. So don't worry about that. Thank you very much, doctor. You know, I actually went through a, a recent telemedicine uh, consultation. It was actually a very interesting experience. So, um, do you want to do one right now, uh, doctor? Because uh, I thought it was an amazing experience. I don't know whether I ever want to go to a face-to-face a, a -face doctor specifically and I would travel for one hour just to get there. Uh, so, uh, uh, I do it. I know if people are just thinking. Okay, so I am going to uh, put my video on. Uh, hi, doctor. Hi, so hi, Mr. Salas. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, so I would say uh, before I get into the consultation, the prerequisites are something which we would have already contacted about ideally. See, there are uh, different ways of contacting the doctor. One is, of course, contacting him directly. One is through the hospital. For example, if, if it's me, then it will be through the slope or maybe through RA social or other ways. Then uh, through platforms. So usually platforms will inform me, platform will inform you saying that this is the slot. So, okay, fine. So now I'm in maybe at a 11.35 slot. Yes. So, uh, so, Mr. Saleh, how have you been? Uh, doctor, I have been okay, but I am a bit concerned. Uh, yeah, that was not clear. I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, doctor, my stomach has been paining for the last four or five days. I have been uh, getting cramps. Okay, so uh, do you have any loose motion? Uh, not in the last two days. I had it before. Okay, so what, did you did you eat any different food in particular? I had ordered, un, uh, despite people telling me not to, I had ordered food from outside. Okay, so uh, but has it settled down uh, the loose motions now, as you said? My loose motion has settled down, but my stomach is still cramping. Okay, where exactly is the pain? It is here. Can you see my? Can you see where the my hand is? 
Uh, I think you might just have to go a bit more behind. Okay. Can you see where my hand is? Yeah, yeah, sure. So is and it happening here or in this eating? area? After eating, before eating. I have this pain uh, the entire day, but it aggravates after eating. Okay. Uh, did, are you taking adequate amount of uh, liquids in the day? I think so. I don't know. Okay. Did you self-medicate? Did you take any medication? I've been taking Fudin Hara. I've been taking anti-acid and I drink milk because I think milk will solve it. I'm not very sure. Okay. So, yeah, as far as diarrhea, I mean, if you had diarrhea, then milk it should be avoided during that time, one. And two is, now that you don't have it and you only have abdominal symptoms and you have symptoms which are more towards the up. So I think it's most related to the gas. It will be most related, mostly related to the gas part only. Uh, I would advise you, I would advise you that, I mean, certain medications like antacids, like pantoprazole. And I would want you to take that for at least a week, half an hour before the food every morning. And then you can get back to me. In the meantime, can you also tell me if you are taking any other medications apart from these? I am taking multivitamins and I am taking some homeopathy. Okay. Uh, and and what about any other diseases that you have? I have high blood pressure. For which I am taking, sorry, I forgot to tell you, I am taking high blood pressure medicine. Okay. So have you treated your blood pressure recently? I don't have a blood pressure machine. Okay, so in that case, I would say it would be best that you purchase one, purely okay. because uh, because you should be monitoring it maybe once or twice in between. And now that you have had a history of high blood pressure, I'm not seen for some time. I would advise you to monitor maybe once daily, make a chart, and try to get back to me on the same. Okay, are you using any are you using any hearing aid, any spectacles? Uh, I have specs which I use only for reading. Okay, so are you comfortable with them? I am okay. I don't really think about it too much. Okay, so how do you spend your day apart from these abdominal pain that you had recently? Apart from that, how are you spending your day? So I am uh, doing a lot of reading. I am. Uh, I have to go out once in two days to buy vegetables. But uh, most of the time, I'm just doing nothing but watching TV and listening to the news and and doing a bit of reading. And also on WhatsApp, uh, watching videos and listening to people on that. Okay. How is your sleep? Uh, I wish it was better. I keep on waking up for no reason. Okay. And uh, I mean, by no reason, do you mean uh, at any point, did you have any urination? That's why you're getting up or you're just getting up? This way? I'm just getting up and then I just lie awake. Okay. Any particular thoughts in your mind or just... You just lie, you just get up and get sleep. I don't think there are any thoughts, but I don't get the, the kind of sleep I used to get four or five months ago, uh, where I used to sleep for five, six hours without waking up. I don't think I'm having thoughts. Okay, but are you, are you a bit stressed out about the current situation? Do you feel so? I am. Uh, I'm worried. I'm not very worried, but I'm worried. Uh, I, I just the fact that I don't know why I'm worried because I don't know uh, life is okay right now, but uh, yeah, I'm just worried. Like, are you so? Are you worried about yourself? Are you worried about your kin? Is there a specific worry? I just want to know when life will get normal again. So I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about my parents. I'm worried about my. Uh, my financial situation. Uh, I'm worried about uh, my my friends uh, who are not feeling too well. Okay. Uh, I how was your appetite? Now? My appetite was good until four days ago. So has it improved a bit now, or it's still the same? Bad. I get hungry, but I don't eat because of my cramps. Okay, fine. Okay, what about your urination? That's normal. I don't think I have that right now, but I think that's because I'm sitting at home all the time and not drinking enough water. So I think I think two things you should do differently. One is try to drink good amount of water because because you had loose stools recently, you might end up getting dehydrated. And one is the current 
situation in which it's actually raining some days and sometimes the humidity is a lot so there is a chance that you might sweat a lot as well so you need to take care of that as well okay uh any any spec as far as your uh, i mean any events that have happened recently in your family which might disturb you i don't think so no i no nothing that has caused me unnatural amount of stress okay fine uh then as far as as far as i think your gastritis is concerned i think the pantoprazole should be good enough so for this i can't understand the word can you just write it down for me whatsapp it to me i would i wouldn't be whatsapping it to you i would actually write it down give you a prescription and i would send it across to you okay uh, yeah. and and you will also get an entire thing of what conversation we have so that you actually have a record and i also have a record and we can follow up on the same with the same but in the meantime i would want you to monitor your blood pressure okay and also try to send me a list of all the medications in details so that you can actually sort of i can actually alter them as well how do i contact you with my medicine by email or by whatsapp uh i would say it would better to email me whatsapp is a good quick way but then as you know whatsapp messages can be lost but emails are something more easily accessible of course if you are not comfortable with email then of course whatsapp is okay with me one uh two is in follow ups i would obviously give you an option i am on these platforms so either you can get in touch with me through the platforms or you can get in touch with me directly i mean that i that i leave on you entirely because whatever you are comfortable with is important uh, for me so ultimately that's what i would like to follow up with you uh if there if there are any, no other questions that you have then of course we can end the consult doctor i have one question when i made this call to you i called up a lady uh, who took my appointment she asked she asked me a few questions and then she gave me a time and date uh, and therefore now this is a follow up do i call you up directly or do i call up that lady again yeah for follow up if you are taking it through the portal you can call her back up there is no problem they will give you an appointment directly but okay. we always in older adults we give an option of flexibility because it's not always easy for them to get through multiple callers it can happen so okay. we, so if you want you can obviously call me directly as well that that's why i said uh, both the options are available thank you very much doctor this has been very helpful um thank you very much I, you know, people are just sort of, just to give you guys a perspective. I actually did a telemedical call uh, uh, for an actual consultation two weeks ago, and uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, number one, I got I got quality time with the doctor. But the most important thing that actually happened is that a doctor's meeting normally takes me two hours from my house to the doctor and back. We finished in twenty minutes, and uh, it was easy. I, I made payment through uh, ATM, if I remember right, and uh, I got a receipt and I got a prescription. I can actually send you the prescription, uh, you know, which was given to me. Uh, we also exchanged reports using emails. Your doctor was right; we, we used emails, and it was actually seamless. It was actually not difficult at all. So I, I completely believe that you know, what doctor is saying is actually a very good idea. So if anybody has any question on the process, on the concerns or technology, please do ask. So, doctor, I think uh, we will call this uh, uh, a wrap of a day. Thank you very, very much. I think this has been very uh, useful. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you again. Uh, just to give you, uh, just to give everybody a bit of uh, background, uh, as far as COVID comes to uh, what doctor has been telling us every week, as well as what uh, we are having some kind of disturbance. Uh, what doctor has been telling us every week, as well as the other people at Tarish Social telling us to keep our minds active, uh, we have started a once a week uh, uh, event on Thursday to teach senior citizens uh, skill sets by which they can keep themselves socially. Mentally uh, uh, active, they will connect with their likes and the peers. Uh, uh, please do uh, look at that flyer and contact the the vendor there. Uh, this is not us doing it; we're just facilitating it. 
uh, but do talk to the vendors. They're doing a fantastic job connecting senior citizens across their own community, playing games amongst themselves. So you don't need people like us only. You can do it amongst yourselves also. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, again, a, a recording of this would be there on my side by the end of day. Uh, looking forward to seeing all of you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. It was a very informative and very nice. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.